Hello and welcome to our recap of our lecture on intangible assets and others. So we've got a few standards here that we looked at, starting off with IAS 40, which was investment property. So remember, what property are we looking at here for investment property? It's property that's held for capital gain or to rent out to others. So if we're renting it to others on an operating lease. So for example, if we had land held for appreciation or land for an in undetermined use, we would class those as an investment property. Also, if we have a building leased out to someone else on an operating lease, well, that's going to be classed as an investment property. Things that it won't be, it's not buildings that are being built for a third party or any buildings that we occupy ourselves. That's going to be under IAS 16. Nor is it going to be any buildings that are sale or for sale in the normal course of business. Those would be our stock. So that would be when we're selling on a normal course of business, not investment property. So we looked at illustration one to make sure we could identify these. Remember, the treatment for this is that we'll recognize them at cost plus related expenditure and transaction costs. So we'll recognize all of those costs in the capitalized amount. Then we use the IAS 16 cost model. So cost less depreciation or we hold them at fair value. We revalue them at the end of each year with the gain or loss to the income statement and we don't depreciate them. So IAS 40, we revalue at the end of each year if we choose the revaluation model uh, and the gain or loss goes to the income statement, not a revaluation reserve and there's no depreciation on the asset. So we looked at how to do that in illustration two. We then moved on to IAS 38, intangible assets. Remember, these are things that are identifiable. You can separate them out so they're separable and we have a legal right to them, but we can't touch them. So we're thinking about things like brands, patents, those sorts of things. We need to be able to control them and they need to give us future economic benefit to be classed as an intangible asset. When do we recognize them then? Well, when they're gonna give us that future economic benefit, i.e. they're gonna generate some revenue, and we've got a reliable measure, that's when we'll recognize these intangible assets. And we looked at illustration three to see when to do that. So some things we need to know in detail. When to capitalize? Well, things that we will capitalize. Development expenditure, which we'll talk about in detail in a second. Also purchased goodwill. Remember, we capitalize that and we've looked at that in our consolidation. Also purchased intangibles, if we buy a brand or buy a patent, we can capitalize that. Things we do not capitalize, research expenditure. So pure research, for example, a feasibility study for a product, we expense, it's not capitalized. Also internally generated intangible assets that we discussed below. So remember for research and development, research is always expensed and we will capitalize development expenditure if it's feasible, i.e. we have the ability to sell the product at the end. If it's gonna give us future economic benefit, so we're gonna sell something at the end again, and we have the intention to complete it. Also, of course, we need a reliable measure, and if we don't have those things, we expense the expenditure in the year. Remember, if we acquire it in a combination, so a subsidiary has some research and development expenditure, we will capitalize it. Remember, internally generated intangibles cannot be capitalized. So things that we've developed ourselves, like goodwill, um, brands, uh, mastheads, and training, all of those costs cannot be capitalized within an entity. The treatment for these is that we capitalize them if the criteria are met, then we amortize them. Basically, we depreciate them. So how do we deal with this amortization? Well, we do it straight line over the useful economic life of the intangible asset. So that starts when production starts, or we do it in line with sales. So we either do it straight line over the useful economic life or in line with the sales that we expect on the product. So we also start that when production starts. So either way, we start the amortization when production of the product starts. 
Things that we definitely always expense, training costs, startup costs, advertising costs, always expensed and not capitalized. We may revalue an intangible asset if there's an active market for it. And we have no amortization if we assess the asset and think that it has an indefinite life, i.e. we're not sure how long the useful economic life is. We don't therefore amortize it, but we do test it for impairment each year. And we did all of that in illustration four. We then moved on to IAS 20, which was government grants. So this is where the government is giving us a grant, either for an expense that we have or for an asset. So we'll uh, capitalize it or recognize it whenever conditions will be met and the grant will be received. How do we do it? Well, for an income grant, so a grant against an uh, expense, we'll match that income to the related cost. So if we had a, a grant for some wages that we were paying, we would match that to the related wages. So the other way to treat it is that we could treat it as other income. So we have a choice. We either match it to the related cost or we treat it as other income. If it's not cash, remember, we recognize it at the fair value. And if the grant is a, in return for an asset, so we have bought an asset and the government has given us a grant to uh, contribute to that asset, well, again, we have a choice. Either we hold it as deferred income and we recognize that over the useful economic life of the asset. So it's held as a liability and recognized over the useful economic life of the asset. Or we deduct it from the net book value of the asset. So that's what we do. And we did an example of that in illustration five. If you have to repay the uh, government grant, what do you do? Well, maybe the conditions have been broken. We have to repay it. If it was an income grant, we simply expense the repayment. If it was related to an asset, we have to look at how we treated it in the first place. So if we had put it to deferred income, we need to reduce the deferred income, or we increase the assets carrying amount if that was the treatment we originally did. So as I said, we did an illustration in detail in illustration five. The last standard that we looked at was IAS 23, which was our borrowing costs. Remember, this was the interest costs that we had on an asset we were building before it was ready. So on assets before they're ready, we can capitalize the interest cost. So what do we capitalize? We capitalize the borrowing cost less any temporary interest uh, investment income, sorry. So the borrowing cost less any temporary investment income. So if we borrowed some money, we pay interest on that, but maybe we didn't use all the money straight away, so we invested some of it. We need to net off any investment income we received on that. If we borrowed general funds, well, then we simply took the weighted average of our borrowing cost and multiplied that by the asset expenditure. We couldn't capitalize more than the total borrowing. And we would begin this on the later of, the expenditure on the asset beginning, the borrowing costs being incurred, and the activities to prepare the asset for use or for sale having begun. So all of those things needed to be in place. We needed to have started expenditure, started borrowing, and started activities to prepare the asset. If there was an extended interruption on our uh, building of the asset, well then we would cease capitalization for that period of time. So we would suspend the capitalization for an extended interruption. And uh, we did a detailed illustration of this in illustration six. Lastly, then we looked at ceasing capitalization and we did that when substantially all of the activities necessary to prepare the asset were complete, i.e. when we'd finished building the asset. So the key things there were we could capitalize our borrowing costs and uh, we needed to net off any temporary investment income that we got at that time. So that was a recap of our lecture on intangible assets and others.